Good evening, y'all, and welcome to our Google Classroom parent orientation. Uh, we'll give a few seconds, up to a minute, to let everyone join uh, that can, and then we'll get started. We're so glad you're all here tonight. Everybody enjoyed the, the rain we had a few minutes ago. We needed it. Got our garden watered. For sure. Oh. All right, we'll go and get started. Um, my name is Adam Wiseman. I am a digital learning and innovation coordinator, mainly serving McDowell High School. I'm Alyssa Knight, and I am a um, digital learning and innovative specialist with the elementary schools and one of the middle schools. And I'm Eve Walker. I'm the digital learning and innovative specialist for the West Middle uh, Foothills and Foothills, Foothills Community School, and then um, Old Fort, North Cove, PG, and West Marion Elementary. Yeah. Christina, we appreciate you too. Um, thank you all for joining in. Um, we appreciate you giving up some time tonight with um, your family and probably some dinner <laughs> and we're doing the same. And um, so we're going to um, respect your time and um, we know that you're going to respect ours as well. Um, so what we're focusing on tonight is Google Classroom um, and how you're going to use it as a parent or a guardian. And so let's, for the most part, let's keep our chat to that tonight. Um, I know you've got school questions. We all have school questions. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that, that we can't answer yet because we don't know. Um, and a lot of stuff is school-based answers. So, you know, a lot of things we won't answer if it's not Google Classroom related tonight. We're just going to say, have you referred to the school? Um, but we'll do our best with you. So we're excited about this. So um, you do have the chat feature. So if you have any questions, you can stick them in there. And we have um, the three of us working on this. And then we also have some teachers that are on right now, too, that can answer some questions and some principles. Um, and so they may be answering your questions as well. So we really appreciate you being here tonight. And um, we're going to make this a real positive experience for you, we hope. OK, so anything before we start? All right. Um, we've kind of put together a slideshow for you that we can talk you through. Um, and this is going to be available after this is over on the McDowell County Schools webpage um, so that you'll have access to it. And I think that will help you. And I think we we'll just if you want to look at it while you're, we're going through it. Um, because if you're like me, you hear things, but you're going, now, what did they say? And so you can refer back to this later. Um, so that's that's our goal. So I'm going to share my screen and then um, put up a talk with um, um, some slides with us a little bit to show you some things. OK, so here we go. Here we go. All right. Can you see me? Can you see my slides? Uh, now you can. Better the can. All right, good. So what we're looking at right now is the Google Classroom on the teacher side. Um, and we're going to look at it on the parent and student side in just a minute. But I wanted to explain um, kind of a little bit about Google Classroom for you. And so this is similar to what it's going to look like um, from the teacher perspective. So let's go here. Let's see. Do to do. Do to do. OK, so Google Classroom. So you're probably sitting there going, you know, some of you have other students that have gone through the school system. And so Google Classroom may be a little familiar for you. Some of you, this may be the first time hearing about it. Um, some of you might be kindergarten parents like myself and this being really new. Uh, so let's just talk about it for just a minute. So what is Google Classroom? Um, think about it like um, a housing for your child's digital learning. So it's a link for that. Um, teachers are going to use Google Classroom to share assignments, homework, newsletters, um, and a way to communicate back and forth with you. So this is where that you'll look for assignments from teachers, um, where they'll post things for them to complete and turn back in. All of that will be housed within Google Classroom. 
Um, they may also use a couple other things, but for the most part, it'll all be here. Um, you'll often hear it referred to as an LMS. So there may be some things that um, the school system sends out to you and they might say the elementary LMS or um, Google Classroom, the LMS, and you're going, what's LMS? Because we get really guilty of handing you acronyms sometimes and you don't know what we're talking about. Sometimes we don't either. Um, but LMS is a learning management system. And so that's what we're using for elementary this year is we're housing things in Google Classroom. Um, if you have a student in secondary, middle or high school, we're using Canvas as their LMS. So we're trying to all stay on the same target. Um, so how do you get there? How do you get to Google Classroom? Um, Google Classroom is a Google product. And so it is going to be housed in the Google Chrome browser. So you can get the Google Chrome browser on an iPad. You can get it on any device you have. You can get a Google browser, the Google Chrome browser. Um, it looks like this on the screen. It's the little red and green and yellow kind of circle there. Um, so you'll click on it and then you'll go to Gmail. So you can type in the address for Google, www.google.com. Or um, a lot of times on the right hand side of the screen, you might already see the Gmail there. Um, you'll click sign in. Now your student um, will be provided with a secure login and password from the school. If they have been in the school system prior to this year, then they already have that. You may or may not know that. Um, if you did um, pandemic learning with us in the spring, you probably did get a hold of that email address. Um, but your teachers will be sharing that out with you soon. Um, so that will be handy for you as well. But um, they'll be getting that to you. All right. So once you get into their Gmail, um, if you will, over in the corner, and I'll pull up mine in just a minute so you can see it, you'll be looking for nine little squares. Um, we call it the waffle because um, everybody kind of can know what a waffle is. We used to call it the Rubik's Cube, and some kids were like, what are you talking about? So then I felt really old. But um, it is a, like the little nine squares, the waffle, and that is their Google Apps. So when they click on that, you're going to find Google Classroom like it is here, but you're also going to find the other things they also have accounts for within the Google system. Um, so if they say, look at your Google Docs, it's here. There's their Google Drive, Google Slides, and things like that are there. Um, so that is where all of their Google tools, if you will, will be housed is in those nine squares there. All right, and so this is the logo you're going to look for. Um, it is the Google Classroom logo. It's going to be um, the same across whatever platform you're using, whether it be an iPhone or an iPad, um, a Chromebook, like most of the students will have. Um, if you're on a, you know, a Mac or a, you know, some kind of laptop or a desktop, that's the logo that you're going to look for once they're signed into their Google account. Um, or if you're going to find the app in the App Store, that's what it looks like. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to pop out for a second. Um, and Eve's going to pop on. And she's going to pull up what a student in my class would look like. So I'm going to stop sharing for just a second. And then she's going to pull up the student page. She's going to be a student in my class. And we're going to talk about what that's going to look like for you. So just to review really quickly the student will get access from their teacher. They will get an email and a password. Um, if you don't already know that, they'll be getting that to you. That will get them signed into their Chromebook. That'll also get them signed in to um, their Google Classroom and any other Google product we have. Okay. And we're going to show you how to get on there as a parent shortly. All right. All right. Miss Eve. Okay, so when your student signs into their Chromebook, they, they are, um, they're using their Gmail and their Gmail password that they will get from their school. Um, and they'll have, they have an icon near the bottom of their screen when they, once they sign into the Chromebook that has that little classroom picture on it. So they can go to their um, apps or um, if there's already one at the bottom, they can just click on it right there and go right into Google Classroom to get started. Um, so once they get into their Google Classroom on their Chrome, but this is like the, what the stream page looks like. That's your main page. Um, it'll have something up here from the teacher, a little banner, and um, or from you know a school banner possibly. 
And um, there, if they have any um, meet links set up to, to do their Google Meets, it'll be here as well. Um, anything the teacher has added that is already assigned um, to the students, it will pop up in the stream, it's called. And it's a stream basically because it shows the most recent um, activity added. If it's an assignment or a material or whatever, it's going to pop up here in the stream. So you can see those um, right there. Then um, if there's any upcoming work that's due, it'll show in this little reminder box here. Um, when you click on the classwork tab up here at the top, it's going to take them to um, their classwork. And teachers have been asked to organize the students' classwork by weeks. So next week is August 17th, the week of August 17th. You will see um, a week of the August 17th. To uh, these are topics, but they're going to be named by the weeks. That way the students can kind of keep up and the parents with um, what's happening that week, what activities and assignments they have for that week. So, um, this one that says ELA would be something like week of August 17th um, through the whatever. So um, then again, it's going to have it's going to show any due dates that are on the items down through on the on the right hand side. Um, left hand side is the title of the assignment. They can click on these. The students will click on these to see what the assignment is and um, they can. Let me just view the assignment so you can see the whole thing, what it looks like. They'll see how many points it is. Um, if there's a due date, they'll be listed here. And this is a CAMI, a CAMI submission type. So that when they do this, they're going to write on it in CAMI or annotate it, annotate it in CAMI, and then they'll turn it in over here. Um, also, they can do private comments to their teacher about the assignment. Anything on the right-hand side is private. Anything under here, it can, if it's allowed, it can be shared amongst the class so the students can discuss the assignment as well with each other. Um, anything extra they need to add can be added here on the right as well before they turn in. And um, that's pretty much it. There's different types of assignments, so you'll see that when you look at your students' assignments. Um, Here's a question that I made you a question. Yes, yeah, she sent us a question. So if we open this one up and to view the question, it says, are you learning something from this training? And I can share my thoughts here with the class or I can share my thoughts in a private comment and Miss Knopp will get it from me. Hopefully nobody can say that. I'm just being fun, having fun with her um, and send that to the teacher. Only she will see this again. This is a private comment. So there's there can be private comments that we don't have to share with all the other kids. So that's a really nice feature. Um, and then when we go back to the main class, classwork, um, that's pretty much, there's different materials would be like, um, maybe she just shared a video for the kids to, to view for that, that week's lessons. Um, they may share an ed puzzle through, through Google Classroom and the student just clicks on those links there and then they can mark it as done when they're finished. So it's pretty easy to, to navigate. Um, there is a people tab here. Um, when they when they come here, they're gonna see, um, I think they'll see their, their classmates, but this is mainly just for the teacher um, to use to contact parents. Um, and I think Alyssa is gonna share a little bit more about that with you. Or do you want me to talk about that, Alyssa, while I'm here? Um, you can show them where they'll be listed, yes. Okay. So you can actually email the teacher from here when you're in your child's Google Classroom or the child can e email the teacher as well if they have any questions. So that's handy. Um, then um, you can also share your email with the teacher and she can set you up with a guardian um, summary. So what that is basically is, um, and Alyssa will show you some screenshots of that in just a moment, but that's basically um, a neat little summary you can get each week about what's due and what assignments are coming up and just kind of keeps you in touch with um, what the student's doing. So you can either view their work from this page, from their logging in, um, but as well as that, you can get a guardian summary each week and you can set up actually how many times you get it, how often you get it, um, so that's really handy too if you just want to be notified as a parent. 
um, you can choose to do that by giving them your email. And you don't you don't have to have a Gmail. It can be any email. It does not have to be a Gmail account. So um, that's and will you go back to classwork for just a minute, please? Yes. Thank you. Will you answer the question and show them just how you do the answer within the, the question there? Mm -hmm. And right there where it says class comments. Yes. Right. So if she were going to answer that question for the class to see, because I was just doing a discussion board, somebody asked this question, um, would they just type it there? Yes. So some things teachers will ask are not going to be turning this piece of paper. They might just be discussion questions just to check for learning and things like that. Um, so once she um, submitted that answer. So yeah, all the kids answers will populate here and they can, um, they can even just, I think you can turn it on. Correct me if I'm wrong, Alyssa. I think they can, the teacher can set it so that students can give each other feedback on a discussion question, correct? Right. Yes. So that's kind of nice too. That's a very nice instructional um, component of Google Classroom. Yes. Um, so I think, right. So somebody asked a question about, um, you saw how you can submit answers with Cami. Um, Cami is a, another tool that we're using with the students this year that um, will allow them, because we're, we're doing a lot of things virtually this year, um, to annotate, which means they can write, they can type, um, they can do a voice recording um, to an answer to an assignment that the teachers have posted um, through like a PDF document. Um, so that would be an easier way for them to be able to show their work and answer some things and submit them back with Cami. Um, it's pretty easy to use. And we've got some tutorials on that if you need it. But um, it's a real handy little tool. If you I mean it's something you could use in the, the business world, too. It's not just an education thing, um, but it's a really neat thing that allows them to annotate. Do you want me to show them Cami real quick? You can. Since we've got plenty of time still, they have, they have this Cami extension. It's the blue button with the K on it and on their Chromebook. I think I have something recent I can use. Let's see. So they can, um, some of those assignments in classroom will have a Cami, they'll be Cami assignments. And that just means it's a PDF that will be copied for each student when they open it. And they can literally, um, what it does is it takes this, you know, a worksheet or a practice sheet into this program called Cami, and they can go in and they can add text box if they want to okay. and write their name on it. They don't really have to write their name on the paper because it, because it, when it makes a copy for them, it puts their name on it. But, you know, I'm just giving you an example of using the text box there. Um, they can go in with the drawing tools and they can add in, um, they can make their own annotations right on the work worksheet. So if I was going to um, draw the, um, let's see, rotation. I don't know if I can do that after this long day, but I'll try. Um, <laughs> so let's see. Um, rotate it. Okay. So if they're rotating it. Um, you get the idea though it, it annotates okay. that's, not, that's too fat but anyway um so it'll annotate right on the on the pdf form and there's an eraser there's shapes you can draw which is quite handy because obviously i have a hard time so if i was going to draw the shape i can just stretch it out there and pop it right in there and there's different color choices um anyway once they finish with their assignment they can go ahead and I don't, I'm not certain it shows this way within a Google Classroom Cami assignment, but they can go ahead and save. Um, there's some different choices here. Share it. They can share the document, print, save. I believe when they click save, they can save it straight to their classroom right. drive. So that's the next option. Um, mine won't say that because I'm a teacher, but um, they'll have the option to save it straight to their class drive for those. So when you're, um, Alyssa, if you want to, I'll let you take over. You can go over like the class um, drive folder and the Google Calendar. I will. Okay. That'll be fine. Do you want me to um, stop sharing or do you want to just, I can navigate? 
that's fine. You're welcome to. Um, and somebody asked this question, and I think um, Adam's answering it in chat. The Cami extension is added on the students' Chromebooks. Um, if it's not, then shoot us an email, and, and we'll tell you how to do it. But we've added it to them, so they won't have to worry about that part. Um, so that works good. Um, yes, so that's a handy little feature. So if Eve will go to the Google Classroom. So when you're in there, um, and a lot of you will be working with your students, um, especially some of the little bits, and kind of navigating this with them. But there's a couple features up here that I was going to show you. You have a class drive folder that when they click on that, it will allow them to go to um, any files that the teacher shares with them. Um, and it'll allow them to, like there's the assignment that she just did. Um, when she completed it, it goes in there. And so they will see their work. Um, they are not going to see everybody. So that, don't panic about that. Um, I'm trying to read comments at the same time. I gotta quit. Um, <laughs> but that's where um, the information will be housed in there in the Google Drive folder there within their Google Drive. Um, the other feature right there is Google Calendar. And so this calendar, it, it really will organize your student if you can um, you know, kind of get them used to looking at it. So if they click on Google Calendar, it will take them to if I click on it, it's going to show my 100 calendars that I have in mind. I, I did that earlier today, so it might be a little confused. I can just show them. It's kind of a mess. but I mean, I don't mind showing them on mine if you want me to. It's It's got a lot in it. So um, their, their student will not have such a busy calendar. Um, they'll have just their Google Classroom in there. So Eve, go over to on the left and go to where it's the, the demo class. Go to the three dots at the end of it and go to show only display this only ah okay we don't um, have anything yeah. in here it's kind of and so this will um it will show as the teacher makes an assignment or as the teacher um puts in i thought let's see um when they add like times that they're going to be going to a live Google meet for you and things, those things will show up in the calendar. Or if you make an assignment and it's due, that will show up in the calendar. Um, so that's going to be a handy thing for them to kind of get used to using will be their Google calendar. All right. So can you get a list of the programs that you will need? Um, personal laptop rather than the school assigned one. Sure. Um, you know, that's no problem. Most teachers are using the same similar stuff. Um, and so we'll, you know, make sure that you need that. The teachers will be sharing that easily, but this will be your main thing that you're going to make sure that you need will be um, be able to sign on to their Google account and be able to get to the Google classroom that the teacher shares with them. So that'll be your first line of defense. <laughs> um, so if you, if you want to make sure you get to one place, this is it. All right. So let's look, um, Eve, if you'll let me share, I'm going to go back to the, um, presentation for just a minute. All right, so when you are on share screen, um, when you are on the presentation, there's some more details if you need, like about the little different things with the page that you can look at um, that I think will help you because you'll notice that when you're on your classroom, if the student is involved in more than one Google Classroom, which they really shouldn't be unless they're um, like their PE teacher or the music teacher shares a Google Classroom with some additional resources. But if you click on the three little lines, that would let them see any of the classrooms they're a member of. Um, there's their calendar again. They can do that. But so this page here will show them show you about navigating the Google Classroom. So you can kind of look at those. Um, different things there, the different features if you're having trouble with it. Um, one thing that I will um, caution people on that we noticed a lot during um, shutdown before is that when people would email us and say the students aren't getting the work, they're not getting their assignment, in the top right-hand corner of your Google page, when you're logged in, that'd be the number seven here, make sure you're on the right account. 
I frequently do this. I have a personal Gmail and a regular Gmail for school. Um, and so make sure they're signed into their school account because if they can't pull up a, an activity or can't pull up an assignment, it's because it was only shared to their Google account. And, and maybe you know they're signed into a personal email or, or you're signed into your email on there too. So just you know, double check that. That's just a little free handy there thing. Um, this again is gonna show you just some features of the page to remind you of those. So as a parent or a guardian, um, your teacher, if you're wanting to have guardian access to this, they might ask you for your email and they can add you to the student's account. Okay, once they do that, you will get an email that says that you need to accept the invitation. Um, so you, you, it's not automatic, you have to accept it. So be looking for those emails once you give it to them. Um, and then you will be able to choose the frequency of how often you receive an email. Um, it could be daily, it could be weekly. Um, you know, it just depends on what you want. So it's gonna kind of look a little bit like this. Um, it'll say that you've been invited to be a guardian in a Google Classroom and you will just hit accept. If you get it in error, which we hope it doesn't happen, you just click that you're not the guardian and, and you won't get it anymore. Um, but you will just accept it and then that they will be able to send stuff to you. And then you'll go in and check the frequency and decide if you want to get a weekly little summary of like assignments that are due, things that are turned in, um, or if you want a daily or if you don't want a summary at all. If you're with the little people, um, and this is all new to them, especially those little kindergarten sweeties, um, you know, they're not going to be able to read most of this stuff anyway. And so you're going to have to do a lot of the, um, the reading with them. And so you'll probably be signed into their account as opposed to getting a guardian summary on that. Um, so you just kind of navigate that as, as you need to. Um, so how can you access this? Like I said, on a computer, laptop, desktop, whatever you have. Um, I like to tell students anywhere that you have the internet, you can have Gmail and you can have um, access to this. So, you know, wherever you're at, you can get it. Um, there is an Android app for it. There is an iPhone app, which you can get on your iPad um, or whatever, or if you have like a, um, like a Samsung tablet or something, um, and you can get it on your desktop. So just, you know, check on the, the Play Store or the App Store and you can get those. And they're there. Um, we're always going to be around when you need help. Um, we're, you know, well, I said we, we pretty much work 24 seven, um, to answer questions for you. So you can email us and we'll get back to you as quick as we can. But your number one line of defense is going to be contact the student's teacher because they need to know what's going on. They need to know if there's a struggle. They need to know if the student's having trouble with a device or with getting onto a website. So they're your number one contact. Once you've contacted them, um, then they're probably going to tell you, you might need to reach out to someone else as well. Um, so this is on the web page, but I'm also putting it here if you need it. Um, McDowell County Schools has a technology help desk. And so there's the email for that, that you can send something to and we'll um, help you either give you some directions. Sometimes we'll video something to, to show you how to do something. So we'll be glad to do that. Um, there's also an academic support email if you're having trouble with something academically that you need somebody to, to walk you through. Um, and this is also linked to back to the McDowell County Schools website. So if you need to look at that, you can. Um, and so let's jump back off for a second. I'm gonna quit sharing um, unless there's anything else. I'm just thinking real quick. Adam, yes. We also have a, uh, a page set up um, for learning management system support. Um, let me share my okay. screen. I'll show you what that looks like. So we will have this linked um, to our websites, um, but this, um, we try to put everything uh, in one place, especially for, um, for parents and students. So we'll have this link to our district page. Um, also, we also popped it into the live stream. So uh, once you're on this page, if you click families, uh, you see some specific Google Classroom uh, documents uh, that are specific uh, to Google Classroom and it hopefully addresses uh, any uh, questions that you may have. Um, so that's that's a great resource to right. check out. Thank you so much. Um, so a couple questions that I'll look at and just kind of hose over and I don't think anybody else has. Um, are they doing live video streaming for the full virtual learning? Yes, and your teacher and your classroom um, 
people in your school will be giving you that information shortly. So you'll know that soon, but they are going to be doing um, some live videos for you. Um, as far as the Chromebooks, um, students are getting Chromebooks. They are ordered. They'll be here soon. Um, everybody in the world is getting Chromebooks right now too. So we've got some shipments coming and going. And so, um, you know, we'll make sure they have what they need to get started and that kind of thing. But just know that it's coming and, and we're doing everything in our power to get things here um, ready for them because we know that that's what they need and we're excited about this. Um, yeah. So what other questions do we have that we need to cover? There were a few questions earlier, Alyssa. Um, somebody asked about usernames and passwords. Your student will get those when they come to student orientation next week, the first week of school, they'll be getting their username and password from the school. So that is not a problem. Um, they, they will not be expected to work on Chromebooks if they don't have a Chromebook yet, but I, we expect to cover most students with some sort of device next week. So um, that will be, um, you'll find out from the school what they get and, um, and you'll get all the information you need from them, from your school, student schools. Um, also, someone asked about private devices, personal devices. Um, that is against our policy to have personal devices for a number of reasons at school. Um, but if you're if you have a personal device at home and maybe your child doesn't have a touch screen and you want that they want to use their touch screen at home, that is fine for at home. So it, that's that it can be logged into just like um, the school issued devices and um, you know things can be done on that at home. But for um, safety reasons and a number of other reasons, they're not allowed at school. So. Um, the question was asked: Does the Guardian summary show how engaged the students have been? No, um, I wish. <laughs> um, but, you know, obviously just the amount of work and things like that we'll be able to see, but it does not show their actual engagement. So somebody asked the question, will all apps and programs that they need already be installed on the Chromebooks? Um, yes. And some things may be just web based and we'll try to, uh, make sure those links are easily accessible. Um, so uh, yes, Allie, those, those will be pushed out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, Carson. <laughs> um, yeah. So we're trying to hit on some of these. Some of these are school-based questions and, and your, um, your school will be answering those soon. We're trying to make sure that everybody gets um, the device that's appropriate for them as far as age group and things like that and what they need. We wish we could buy everybody the, the very best and the newest of everything, and, but we're going to get them what they need. So we're excited about that. Um, just know that the teachers are working so hard right now to get everything ready for you, and um, they're really ready to work with this. So will they be using the Chromebooks at home or at school? Um, they'll be using virtual at home or on their AB week off, then they'll be using them at home. Any other questions? So to fully address that too, uh, you All kind right. of cut out a list. I don't know if it was on my end or what, but uh, so yes, they will be using their Chromebooks. So if they're in person and they have been issued a Chromebook, they'll need to bring it to school during the in-person week. Okay. As well as when they're doing the remote week. Yeah, Emma, they'll address that with you um, when they go to orientation. But we understand people have work schedules and 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 they're going to make sure that instruction is, is delivered in a way that, you know, when the students are able to work, they'll work. Um, so we, we know everybody has some things on. Um, Christina, your school will address um, attendance with the students and how that's going to work because it varies with depending on what schedule they're on. So but attendance will matter. Anything else you can think of? Um, Christina, will a copy of their assignments um, stay in their account? Yes, it should stay in their Google Drive. And Christine, if you notice, if you feel like you, your child might need some extra support, uh, the best thing to do is reach out to your child's teachers and they'll be able to provide um, 
provide you what's needed uh, to best meet uh, individual students' needs, okay? So. Absolutely. And, the, and, and I, I speak for myself, but I think I speak for all of us at the same time. We're more than willing, if you're having trouble with a platform, like if your student's supposed to be using Flipgrid or um, Seesaw or something, and you're struggling with it, let us know. I don't mind making a video showing you how to do something. Um, and I'm sure they don't as well. Um, we've gotten really good at making videos and um, sending those to you. So, and your teachers can do that as well, but just let us know. We're, that's what we're here for. We're here to help. And we're also planning hopefully um, to start doing more live streams uh, and kind of going over some different apps that students may be using. So look for more information on that later because um, uh, we do like this personalized, even though it's virtual, we like this personalized um, kind of um, virtual experience because we can respond directly to your questions and try to address the ones that we um, that we know the answer to. Um, so we're, we're going to be trying to plan some more um, live streams um, so yeah. we know that you all as parents and families, you're the one of the most important c components in student success. So we do appreciate all that, all that y'all are doing. Yeah. So Tana, they should be getting in touch with you as far as um, how to get her um, things. If she's doing hundred percent virtual and doing the orientation virtually, um, her teacher should be contacting you. They're making phone calls all day long. Um, so it's coming. Um, and so that will be good. And, if she has her own school Gmail account, if she already knows that, then yes, she can use it. But if it's a personal Gmail account, um, it won't work with what we're doing with school because she won't be getting the um, the same access to stuff. So she needs to use her school Gmail account. So if you already have that, then for sure, go ahead and let her use it. Um, but you've all been very kind. We appreciate it. Um, and just really reach out. Let us know what we can help you with. Any other questions? I'm trying to get the the good ones, the ones we can answer. <laughs> so we are offering this session again next week, I think on Tuesday, maybe. Tuesday. Um, and then if you have a student in middle or high school, um, we will be uh, offering another Canvas parent orientation, uh, I think on Thursday. So, and this is also recorded as well. Yeah. I, I was going to mention there is a family uh, MCS family expectations for blended learning, like a poster. It is uh, posted on that McDowell County Schools live instruction page on Facebook. Yeah. If you go there, um, Let me show you real quick. That over, that'll be helpful. And then there is a link to a form for you guys to fill out for each of your students in McDowell County Schools that will let um, them give permission for everybody to be on their um being video, being in video with the live sessions and for photos, that sort of thing. Um, and it's kind of an all in one form. So please be sure to click on that form link that's posted on Facebook and fill one of those out for each of your students. And it'll answer a lot of the questions you're having too, I think. Yes. So yeah, go ahead and fill this out. and um, It's on there and it, then you'll be good to go. So Donald, you asked a question, will they be using the Chromebooks at school as well as a home? So if um, you have selected in-person um, instruction, um, they will need to bring their Chromebook if they've been issued one to school uh, the week that they are at school. And then they'll be using, their, they can use their Chromebook at home um, as well. Melissa, if you don't have Facebook, um, we're live streaming this to uh, to YouTube as well. Okay, so uh, if she's asking about the form and the the expectations for families, I believe that's on the McDowell County Schools website as well. Yeah. Yes. yes. So um, we'll we'll post the let me post the the link to uh, our district um, website in the live chat so that you can have it. You do not have to use Facebook. We have an excellent YouTube channel that has all of our teachers pre-recorded videos on it and we'll continue to have um, all the teachers' videos that, that are added to that to share with, us, with the whole county. And we've got lots of help videos for parents. So if you've not been to our um, 
MCS Teaching and Learning YouTube channel, please subscribe to that and check out some of those parent help videos and technology videos we have on there and some instructional, lots of instructional videos for your kids. Yes, and if you've not heard from your child's teacher or from the school by you know lunchtime tomorrow, give them a call. Um, they're trying to reach out, homeroom teachers are trying to reach out to every parent. So you should be getting a phone call soon. <laughs> Hey, Sadie. Sean, that's a great idea. Just reach out to your child's school and see if they're um, able. I'm sure they'll be, they would love to do something like that. Yeah. Are we good? Y'all can go enjoy dinner. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we'll see y'all soon. Y'all have a good night. Thank Bye. you. Good evening. <laughs>